Best Irish music on irishradio.org with Jerry Byrne. Irish Radio, I'm Jerry Byrne, and speaking to uh, many of the great and the good of entertainment, I've got a gentleman who has spent many, many years involved in uh, uh, the show bands and music and uh, has travelled the length and breadth of Ireland, uh, was the uh, lead uh, leader of the uh, Plattermen back in the days in the 1960s. So I'm delighted to say hello to uh, uh, Pat Chester's. Pat, how are you? Not so bad at all, Jerry. Good to hear from you. Same as that, Pat. Listen, you've been a, you were a long, long time involved in music. When did it all start out? Oh God! Well, we had we had a wee local band just just in the in, in local boys and girls club at about fifty five, nineteen fifty five, fifty six, and around then, you know. So I'm since then. Wow, you've been on the go. You've been on the go since uh, since that time. Um, Aye. And then, uh, how did uh, how did the Platter Men come together? Well, there was a chap. Uh, it wasn't us. We got it together. There was a chap called Brendan O'Donnell. Uh, Brendan's an accountant in the town, and he retired now, obviously. But it was Brendan actually got to the, the, together. So the first band that we played was myself, Artie McGlynn, Ray Moore. And then two lads that didn't follow through were a fellow called uh, Jackie Sloan and uh, a fellow called Arthur McCrory. They were just lo- in the local bass band, you know. And we played in Foxford and County Mayo, and that was the first gig that I played. We played there as the Melody Boys. Right, right. And uh, and then uh, uh, then after that, you uh, when when did the... Uh, well, Brendan, Brendan decided to... Brendan uh, put the band on the road for a while, a year or so, but then he just decided that he wanted to go and study accountancy, so I took over as manager. So I was managing the band and playing them as well, you know, for the first three years. So I took it into the 60s, you know. Right. And then we were, we were called the Platters then, but um, we decided then with uh, the making of records that... Uh, the American group were still very popular, the platters, the American platters. So that is, we, we decided either to change your name or, or to do something. So it was me suggested sticking on platter men on to the end of it, you know. And that's when we became the platter men, early 60s. Right. And when did uh, Brian Call join you? Well, we had a singer called Aidan O'Neill. Uh, he was, he was a, he had been a, a quiet singer. Um, and then we had a uh, bass player called Sean Hamilton doing the rock and roll. Speedy was his name. So then, uh, Brian, we, we made Brian an offer, and Brian came in in the early 60s as well, then until the, it was about 63 or 64. Uh, Brian came in, and uh, he stayed with us for a while. Then he left us for a while, and then he came back to us for a while. <laughs> right, right. I mean, the 60s, yeah. And he, I mean, he had, uh, he had some huge, huge uh, successes. I mean, I remember back in, I think it was 1966, uh, a huge success with the Blazing Star of Athen Rye. Yeah, that, that was, we, we, we made an album at that time too, uh, the Rose Trilly album, and uh, Brian was on then. But Brian just wanted to, to sing country, you know, and he wanted to go country, and that's where he left, you know. Right. He just, we were, we were sort of a pop band, and we wanted to go pop and rock, and... He wanted to play country, so Brian went on his way, and we went our way. You know, right? That was a, that was eventually uh, that Brian eventually left in uh, I believe it was nineteen seventy two. Oh, he, he was he was um, he was in the night before that. You know. Okay. Okay. Yeah. He, went to, he left us. He went to the poker dots, and then he came back to us, and then he left again and found the workers. You know. Yes, that's right. Joined join the Buckaroos then, and uh, yeah. tell me this, Pat. Did you continue on with the uh, the Platter Men after that? I was the manager for uh, at that time. Then we got Jamaican, so I was the Platter Men in nineteen seventy four. Okay, okay, and then uh, uh, then J- Jamaican took over. Jamaican was took over as manager in the mid sixties when we when we did Ireland Strange. When we started to record, Jim came in. Okay. And Jim, it was Jim was the instigation of getting the the Rose of Tilly for us. And we did the we did the Rose of Tilly uh, in Tilly, you know, the the final rose. 
Mm-hmm. And uh, the girl that won that year was a girl called Therese Gillespie from Belfast. And she's the girl that's on the cover of the LP. She was she was actually Rose of Three. Right, right. We, we released the album then, you know. I remember, yes, I remember that. I remember that indeed. And uh, tell me this, Pat, how long did how long did you stay with the uh, the Platter Men yourself? To nineteen seventy four. Seventy four. Okay. Right. Okay. And uh, I think at that stage, the the, the Platter Men were going very uh, uh, going very more poppy, rocky at that time. We were, we were going into heavy, but what, what actually happened was this quite a change in of of. Um, Quite a change of personnel. You know, there was a, a few boys in and out at the time when um, the drummer left and Alan McCartney left and we got Noel Bridgman in on drums and Philip Donnelly came in on guitar. And uh, what happened then was the, the band was sort of split in that the rhythm section of the band, the guitars and the drums were in Dublin and the rest of us, the brass, we were up in, in the north, and just the, the running up and down for practice and things like that just didn't work out. And uh, I, I left them and left the, the band and went on their own then to, to the gate, you know. Right, okay. Uh, they then went on, uh, I believe at one time they had Rob Strong was the lead singer. Uh, with Rob, the, Rob was the lead singer at that time, I. Indeed, they, they went on uh, to one off. Uh, tell me this, Pat, what did, what did you do after that? I, I, I um, after the gate. Yeah, after I went, to Las, I went to Las Vegas with Brendan Moyer. Okay, okay, that was a, that was a, it must have been a heck of an experience. I, I was, I was there for uh, three years, nearly with Brendan, you know. Right, that was, that was the time and that the, the big age went. Ah, yeah, I was in the big age for that, you know. I was, I was in Vegas twice. Okay. Um, my wife didn't like the, the American scene, and the band was going to live full time over there, you know. So it, it just wouldn't have worked family wise, you know. Okay. And uh, I come on home then, you know. Right. But it must have been a great experience. Uh, the you know the whole. That was a good experience. I mean, you know, we were a little bit heavy work. You were working uh, three shows a night, five nights a week, six oh. nights a week. Sorry. Wow. Yeah. That is a heavy schedule. You were on and hour, off and hour, just uh, uh, each night, you know. Okay, okay, that is fair. But that was pre- that's yeah. pre- pretty good. That was the first year was in the Stardust Hotel, and the second year was in the Aladdin Hotel. Okay. That was a, you know, that was a look, fair play. You know, that was a, uh, that was back in the, in the you know, in the days when uh, Brenda Boy was absolutely huge. Uh, Brenda was very big in Vegas, and, and fairness to the lad, you know. Yes. He, uh, he had quite a reputation out there, you know. Indeed, indeed. Then we, we, we did, we did uh, New York, Boston, Chicago. We did the, the Irish centers and those places as well, you know. And um, as well as Vegas, like we, we, we did some gigs out, you know. Right, right. And he, uh, Brendan actually remained uh, living in Las Vegas. Brendan was living in Las Vegas for a time. You see, that's the, the, the whole, all the band became, uh, got their citizenships, you know, and, and, and stayed in Vegas. And uh, they only come home to Ireland and just now and again, you know, but they, they, they went to uh, fully resident as regards families, you know. The families and all went out and stayed there, you know. Right, right. But uh, it just uh, kind of, it, it, it wasn't for you. No, it wasn't for me. It wasn't for me. My lads were too grown up, you know. I couldn't be changing schools every six months, you know. Yes, yes. Can under can understand that. So after uh, after your stint in in Vegas, uh, Pat, what did you do? Um, I was out of work for a couple of years, and then I, I joined uh, Jimmy Conley in, in, in a band called King Creole. I remember them well. Yes, I played with Jimmy and the boys for t- three or four years, and then. Uh, I left that then, and um, I ended up then, I did a couple of years with Frank Chisholm, Elvis. Yes, remember well. You know? Yes, absolutely, yeah. Absolutely, Frank yeah. Was, Frank, was a, Frank was a great Elvis impersonator. He was one of the best, you know? Indeed so. Yes, I'd have to say. I've so, so a couple of good years were in. I don't know. I, I, uh, I just decided I'd had enough of bands, and, and uh, I wouldn't... I was actually out of work, but I, I went into the local college 
to learn photography, and I, I did photography for a few years, did weddings and that lot, you know. And uh, while I was in learning photography in the college, uh, I took a couple of, um, I got my study in Jerry's, and I ended up teaching the photography in the college. So I spent quite a few years in, in, in the college teaching photography and working with special needs kids, you know. Excellent, excellent. Well, well done, well done on that. I'll have to say, Pat, you've uh, you, you've uh, had a, a fascinating career, and uh, you've uh, you've certainly uh, travelled the miles, not alone in Ireland but in the US as well. I just uh, well, with the Platinum and and the any time too, we we did New York twice, and we did Canada once for a week in each of them at, at uh, in the in the sixties. You know, with the Platinum. Superb, superb stuff. You know, uh, well done, well done on it all. Absolutely, uh, absolutely fantastic yeah. stuff. And and uh, you you know you've uh, you certainly have a you certainly have a, a lot of experience of uh, of it all from uh, back in the heyday of the uh, of the bands. Oh, it was a, it was it was a time that the, the, the whole country changed. Not only the show bands, you know, the the whole country sort of woke up. I think <laughs> we were kind of asleep. <laughs> Perry Perry to the sixties, you know, and I think the sixties shook us all up, and we woke, we woke, we woke up. Indeed, indeed. So yes, it was a, it was a time of uh, of, of monumental change, and a lot of low. Oh, it was a big change. Every, everybody's life changed then, you know, not only ours, you know. Indeed, indeed. So, indeed. So, it was a major. You know, it definitely was a major change. It, not alone in music, but in uh, in in many ways, it was part of a journey of uh, a changing of attitudes and perceptions and everything else. Yeah, well, I mean, my wife stuck by me. You know, there was many lads, the, the wives left them because they, they couldn't take the, 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 the being away from home all the time, you know. Indeed. And chopping and changing so much, you know. Indeed. So I was lucky in my way, you know. Indeed so, indeed so, yes. It, uh, it it was a life that uh, it wasn't, uh, you know, uh, it was a long way re- removed from your normal five nine to five job. Yeah, of course. Me, you know, my father was in the painting trade. You know, um, I remember at the time coming up and, and telling my father that I had got five pounds for a night's work. He was working for ten pounds a week for ten pounds. You know, he, he couldn't believe that I could pick up five pounds in one night. You know. Wow! It just shows you. Just shows you. Uh, yeah. You know the way the the way that things are, Pat. Listen, it's been fascinating talking to you. It really has, and uh, it's been lovely to lovely to catch up with you. And listen uh, to you, to yourself and your family. You know, in the in the times we have, you know, stay safe and well. Good man. Good man. Thanks for the call.